Hey, Hickok45. We're going to talk to you a little bit about smokeless powder versus black powder. And I know you've heard both terms. This is kind of a basics video where we try to impart a little information. I'm not going to charge you extra for it either, I promise. You've heard the terms black powder, you've heard the term smokeless powder. Uh, black powder is the powder that is black. We have some poured out here, in fact. Of course, most powder is black looking or deep gray looking. This is black powder right there. And uh, over on the right, we have some smokeless powder. So we're gonna do a little demo to show you the, the difference in the burn rate and all that. You know, this is some elephant, old elephant black powder. It's, uh, I believe, 3F, yeah, 3F, which uh, has to do with the granule size, okay? The more Fs you have, like a 4F has really small grains, and 3's not quite so small. 2 is very popular for large caliber rifles, muzzle loaders, and things. And then uh, 1F is very large. I think they use it for cannon, things like that. But anyway, that's what the Fs mean with uh, black powder. So that's black. Now this is used some unique uh, smokeless, some modern powder, you know, over there. And we're going to do a little demo. I know we've done a little of that in the past, but we're going to include that in this uh, little demo. So, and in these cartridges, we have black powder. These are some black powder cartridges. These are standard 250 grain, 45 Colt slugs cartridges I've loaded, but they happen to be loaded with black powder. Uh, just like the old days. And this happens to be my old 1884 Colt that uh, was made in 1884 of all things and has a black powder frame as they call it and uses black powder cartridges not supposed to use modern smokeless powder in that gun again it has the black powder frame we've done some uh, some info uh, uh, you know videos on that sort of thing too I doubt that in 1884 they called that a black powder frame right just as they did not call this black powder in 1884. They called it gunpowder because that's what it was referred to as. It was the powder. It was gunpowder. I think I've discussed that before. How It's funny. You catch some B-grade Western and they'll have some big keg of powder and it'll say black powder on it, you know, in the years 1870 or something. I said, well, that's interesting. That's the only kind of powder they had, black powder. So it was just gunpowder is the way it should be labeled. And in black powder, I mean, this powder gunpowder up until the late 1800s goes back like a thousand years I think the Chinese the general consensus is the Chinese came up with it like around a thousand years ago or a while so that's even before my time and uh, so it was just powder and I guess it was a while before it was called even gunpowder right so uh, we had to have guns to call it gunpowder but it's just gunpowder you know for hundreds of years and uh, so the only reason we call it black powder is the fact that uh, it to differentiate from smoke powder, smokeless powder, okay? It's kind of like wired and wireless, you know? We don't, didn't talk about something being wireless until, you know, we had things that had to be wired and things that aren't wired. So what we're going to do is take a couple of shots with black powder. We'll show you the difference. I mean, it, it doesn't look all that different. It is black, but it really produces white smoke, doesn't it? So if that's ever been confusing to you, let's look at the, uh, the smoke, black powder, you can tell uh, by the smoke and the lovely smell of it. It's uh, primarily, I guess, uh, what, uh, sulfur, charcoal, and saltpeter. And uh, it's a kind of a simple formula. It's been around a long time. So, again, this is a gun that was made in 1884. And it should, uh, you know, be used with black powder only, which is what we're going to do. And I'm going to... I'm going to do something that I hope you appreciate. I'm going to dirty this thing up. And here we go. Let's see. Now, it does shoot, I think, high, as I recall. I haven't shot it a lot. We'll see if I can hit that <laughs> uh, two liter. Oops. I don't think they shot too many two liters with them in 1884, but we'll try one right here. Now, watch the smoke. <laughs> nice. We'll take another shot at the <laughs> propane tank. Right, I heard it hit. Let's try the red one. <laughs> I love that smoke. <laughs> Let's try this red plate here now. Ah. Well, I don't know where that went. <laughs> but this gun, oh man, what a piece of history. So you see the smoke, I, it's, I'm in a cloud of it myself. And this, of course, is what you see when I shoot the muzzle loaders, black powder. 
that's uh, that's what it does. It messes up the brass. I keep it separated and clean it, soak it, and everything. It is a labor of love. I'm gonna take a couple more while I'm, while I'm doing it. It uh, it really is messy. Oh boy. But, you know, that's part of it. And uh, that's something you should remember when you're watching a Western, what they actually had. And I've got five more in. I'm going to go down here and shoot this cowboy. I mean, is that appropriate or what? I don't know how close I'm having to get to hit him, but uh, I'm going to shoot him. Shoots a little, a little high, maybe a little to the left. That's right. I've forgotten about that. But that's that's what you get. It's lovely and it smells great. It smells great. Black powder. And uh, and again, in the interest of history, in your education and mine, uh, this is what it should look like in the Western when they're touching these things off. Okay, black powder, gunpowder. If I could go back to 1884 again, I'd be talking about. You know, the gunpowder in my cartridge is not the black powder. All right. Let's look at the difference before we touch some of that off there. Now, this is a, a more modern. This is still a first-generation Colt. This one goes to, uh, this was uh, 1901. And uh, in the late 1800s is when Smokeless came into its own. Actually, I think it was under development in the mid-1800s. But then in the 1880s and especially 1890s, that's when you started seeing smokeless cartridges, okay? And so this is right after the turn of the century, 1901. It has a little bit better steel in, in the gun to withstand the pressures of smokeless powder. Smokeless powder has a different pressure curve, and that's why you're not supposed to use it in these old black powder guns, okay? Now notice the difference. I'll shoot the cowboy some more. smoke now these are hand loads too of course and uh you know so this is not totally smokeless which is another you know it's like a suppressor isn't totally silent is it uh smokeless powder is not necessarily totally smokeless it's just uh called that and it is less smoky generally well, some of it's pretty smoky and you see that when i shoot my hand loads sometimes especially with cast bullets and bullet lube and everything you, you get a fair amount of smoke still considered smokeless powder that uh, differentiates it okay so like i say uh once we got into the 1880s, 1890s, this was developed, smokeless powder, lots of different kinds of it. Of course, it's much more complex. There's a, a, a thousand different smokeless powders. And then we were also able to uh, take advantage of the semi-automatic technology, too, with smokeless powder, where that's virtually impossible to do successfully with, with black powder just because of the residue and, uh, you know, the crud that it creates. All right, so uh, that's the bottom line. Uh, black powder up until you know around 1900 essentially think of it in terms of that uh, rough date uh, 1890s it was just black powder okay it was gunpowder that was gunpowder up until then now we use smokeless uh, for most things and when I go back into the old days I actually do use the real black powder there are some su substitutes for it but that's, uh, that's what that's all about uh, there's a th now some people you will hear you know and I'm aware of this they'll take an old colt like this and they'll load smokeless in a really light load and mess with that and that's not advised experts agree you got to be careful with that uh, just because it's a light load not enough because uh, you get a different pressure curve a lot more pressure with smokeless powder so just lightening the load is, is still unsafe you want to use black powder or black powder substitute that's maybe not so messy okay now that's 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 the beauty of, of that okay all right, black powder, good old Colt. Now, let's take a look at the burn rate. Uh, and you can always tell black powder. Uh, before we light it, I thought we'd set this here just to demonstrate. Let's see. The black powder is over here. The smokeless is, is over there. And I'm going to move over here, and I'm going to get my, my light stick. And uh, I'm going to light this. And you're going to see demonstrated the difference in the burn rate. I my lighter. Did I stick it in the? Pot there. I've got a match here. Okay. 
get to play with the fire here, Independence Day. So, uh, let's see. Notice my homemade lighter. I'm going to hold it right there. And what we're going to watch is the powder is going to burn across. That'd be my guess, at least, okay? And from uh, there to where the cartridge case is, is smokeless. And the rest of it is black, in indicated by the, the cans there, okay? Now, wait a minute. Maybe we ought to move those. Do you reckon that's be safer? I'll bet it would. Okay, let's put those over here, away from the fire. And then let's light this. All right. So, I don't know, maybe this will show you a little bit about it. They just have a different uh, different characteristic and a burn rate. And it, there's really nothing we can do here uh, <laughs> that's going to be dangerous. <laughs> At least I'm trying to tell myself that, right? Okay. I figure the worst will happen, I'll have to push that board over. Mostly, I don't want to burn my leather. Okay, so I'm going to stand back and let you watch. Okay. Remember, it's smokeless over to the cartridge case. Okay. Now, when it gets there, I think it'll speed up. Woo! <laughs> what did I tell you? <laughs> nice. Smoke rings in the woods. Nice. Nice, nice. So that's uh, that's kind of the difference. You get a you get a faster, you know. It's it's contradictory. Uh, if you read about it, it'll tell you that black powder burns slower, and uh, in some ways, I guess it does. But it, it it eats up a lot faster. Put it that way. But it has a different pressure curve, and it's safer. It it is. You can load and when you load a case with it. For example, with uh, modern powder. You've got to measure very carefully, depending on what pattern you're using, use uh, five grains, 6.2 grains, all that kind of thing. And you can get a really hot load in a hurry. You have to be careful because you've got a lot of space capacity with a 45 Colt. Whereas with these, when you're loading black powder, and many of you know this already, uh, it doesn't matter how much you put in that case. You can fill it up, you can put half full, doesn't matter. As long as it's, com it's supposed to be compressed a little bit, ideally, where you don't have air space in it. As long as you get the air space out, so what I do is if I'm going to load half a case, or, or which I don't, I'll put some wadding in there, and that takes care of that. So it doesn't really matter how much you have, other than you want to be consistent and have the same load in each one, and, uh, and have wads or whatever it takes to, to have uh, no airspace in there, basically. Not that it would probably blow up or anything, but that's just a little tidbit, too. No extra charge for that. So this little information here about smokeless versus uh, black powder, because I know you see that. You hear me talking about it in videos where I maybe don't explain it. You know, I talk about the crag being one of the first smokeless cartridges and just different things like that. Well, that just means that's probably some firearm that, that, that came about around the 1890s, most likely, and it utilized smokeless powder. The the metal in the gun was sufficient to withstand it, and uh, you know and the, the bullet and everything. For example, the 303 British, it first came about as a black powder round. Uh, then I think it was pretty quickly uh, moved into smokeless, you know, because that was what the late 1880s or something, you know, in 18 years, right there in that same time period. Uh, but that's where you get you get smoke uh, black powder by and large like the old 4570s and 45 colts and all those rounds then you move up into the late 1880s 1890s and you start seeing some smokeless rounds and then into the 1900s okay so you can't make a big mistake with black powder as long as you load it properly i can shoot black powder in this one if i want to even though it's a more modern gun i can shoot it in a modern gun it's just it's messy okay but i can't go the other way you don't want to shoot black powder in an old gun. Uh, excuse me. You don't want to shoot smokeless powder in an old gun that's from the black powder era. All right. So a little primer on black powder versus smokeless. Hope you learned a little bit from that. Life is good.